what I'm gonna show you now is a real biggie and that is true stereoscopic workflow in the viewport and for rendering. Beforehand it was possible to create stereoscopic renderings using a special add-on but now we can actually see it in the viewport. So put on your red cyan glasses and let's go. You can turn it on in the layers panel here and you see down here, views. Let me just turn it on. And now you see in front of the camera this plane here. This will actually denote the place where the two cameras or eyes are converging. And now let's see what's happening when I'm looking through the camera. Wow, isn't that really, really awesomely cool? Because now I can actually get a feeling of these two cubes as real 3D, like they're inside the monitor. So this has been a feature many people have been waiting for and it was integrated in other 3D packages and now it's officially in Blender as well. And so let me walk you through all these awesome features you have here. First of all, here in Fuse, you have the normal stereo 3D, which will generate a left view and a right view, which you can see here, the blue and the red one. Or you have multi-view. This means you have to set up your stereoscopic workflow yourself. You have to place the camera yourselves and everything, but you can create multiple cameras. For example, you could create a center version as well. So here we could also enter a center version or a rendered view version. So like the one in the center is for the 2D version of your 3D movie and the left and the right one are for the left and right eye for the stereoscopic version. But usually stereo 3D should be more than enough because in modern workflow it's usually meant that the left eye will later be used for the 2D version and the combined one for the stereoscopic version. So. You see that this here is actually a red cyan anaglyph display, but there are many others available as well. And it really depends on your device. For example, if you have a real 3D monitor, an active one, for example, then you can choose one of the others. And you can change this here in window, set stereo 3D, and you have really lots of options. First of all, display mode, and I will leave this at anaglyph. And for example, if you have it in Anaglyph, you have red cyan, green magenta, or even yellow blue. And I'm usually going with the red cyan, no, with the yeah red cyan, because this is the one where I found it to be the easiest one to get glasses for. Then there is interlace, which will look a little strange. This is for monitors where that will project the different lines you have here into different eyes. So we have um, left, right interlaced, but also top bottom that is column interlaced. And then also checker box, checker board, which will be like um, the lines are now uh, from top left to bottom right. So this should cover many, many display devices. Then we have time sequential. This is for uh, monitors that use uh, shutter glasses, active ones. I cannot show you this here, unfortunately. And then we have side-by-side. -side. And for side-by-side, -side, we can also choose cross-eyed, which is for images where you actually uh, have to do a cross-eyeing to get this 3D effect, which is also pretty interesting. And the side-by-side -side one will not work here in this windowed mode. See here, it needs to be full screen. So let me hit Alt and 11, so you can somewhat see it. And um, this is now the view you get when I'm only having one monitor. Usually for your 3D device, it will be like in the display settings of your operating system as if you had a second monitor to the left or to the right. So you can actually have the full window. And same thing is going on with top bottom. So set stereo 3D, top bottom. This will also only work in full screen mode, Alt and 11. And now we have it top to bottom. So. This is it about the different possibilities to display your content and I will set it to Anaglyph Red Cyan for the rest of this demo. Now let me show you how you can display a little more information in the viewport because you already see you have this plane here. 
but there is a lot more you can see. So let me go down to stereoscopy. And for example, I can display the cameras because it's usually more than one. So you see, it's actually two cameras, one for the left eye, one for the right eye. Let me just select them. And here you have, we have the plane. This is the place where the um, where there is no 3D effect, the so-called convergence plane. And this is usually should be the plane that should be like your monitor. And then we have here volume. This is the actual volume. And you see on the to the left and to the right, you see these areas. This is where only one eye will see it. It's okay to place anything in the areas behind your convergence plane, like going into, into the monitor, but in front, you should avoid the red and blue areas. So you see that it gets the, the area where you can actually place in things in front of the convergence plane usually gets smaller and smaller. Now for a few more settings about this. And for this, let me go to camera data or camera settings. And here we, for example, we can change the convergence plane distance. And for example, let me set it to be directly inside of the cube we have here. And let me duplicate it and place one a little closer to the camera. Now let's see. If you're looking through the camera, you see that we have a very slight 3D effect of the um, cube in front, but not really any 3D effect for the cube we got here because, well, it's inside the convergence plane. And if you other settings you can have through the camera, and for this I want to move out here again, select the camera. That is the interocular distance is basically how far away your eyes are from each other. I should, I would leave this at this uh, default value, but you can of course also increase this and you see the second camera moves farther away and thus also everything else is changed accordingly. Then here down below we have the pivot. This is when, for example, I'm rotating the camera, it's rotating, of course, around the pivot and the default is the left camera because in most productions, this is the camera that uh, will be used for the 2D versions. So, of course, this is the camera where everything should be rotated around. But you can also set it to the right camera. So now I am rotating here and you also see that the um, second camera now has switched from left and right. And there is the idea to put the pivot exactly in the center. This is usually also useful if you are having a, well, if you want to do it like um, you're actually doing only the 3D version and um, you're moving the camera is like the, exactly like you would move around your head, then center is also cool. But uh, usually the default is perfect for most productions. Then we have the type of stereoscopy we want. The off axis is actually changing the thrust rooms of the cameras towards the plane here, towards the um, convergence plane. And then we also have parallel. This will mean you have just two parallel cameras. Um, many 3D movies that are shot on with real cameras are shot using this, this way. So you will um, probably choose parallel if you want to put um, 3D scenes into real life footage. But uh, here you have a problem that you cannot really preview it and you have to um, work with it later on. So you have to converge it manually. And then this toe in is a special version where anti cameras are actually rotated. This uh, is very uncommon and it's just there because well, Blender can do it. And if you need it, then it's good to be there. And by the way, off axis is more or less how your eyes are really working. So it is best to keep it at off axis. 